Hello and welcome to Tutorial to You. My name is Yannick and in this video we are going to take a look on how you can decrypt and encrypt a password for example in C Sharp using an encryption algorithm. Bye. So let's say my username is Yannick. Let me just enter a password. Let's just say test for example. Let me hit enter. You can see the encrypted password right here and you can see after we decrypt it again you can see it's the correct one. For this we used an AES, an advanced encryption standard algorithm and now let's dive right into it. Let me show you how you can do it and what's happening in the background. Now we for sure have the content of this video also written down as an article so if you want to copy that code later on after watching the video you can find the link to this blog article in the video description below. Alright, so here we got our program, it's .NET 7, but nothing really too special and instead of really writing every single line of code down, I just explain and show the entire program. Here's our main method, just some console write line, all of that. The interesting part is decrypting, right here, the decrypt method and the encrypt method. Now encryption, that's very important. Encryption converts plain text, so the readable data, like my raw password, it converts it into an unreadable format, which is called ciphertext. As I said, we want to use the AES, the Advanced Encryption Standard Algorithm, right here. And for that, we need a key and a so-called initialization vector. Now, as you may have already guessed, the key is crucial for encryption and decryption. So only if you have the key, you can decrypt ciphertext back to the normal plain text. So if you encrypt something and you are missing the key, you cannot decrypt it again. And we will get to that just in a second. The IV that you can see right here is the initialization vector and that's another layer of security because it prevents that the same plain text is being encrypted to the same ciphertext. So let's say we got our password test and we got the key 1234, just as an example. Every time we would have that same password, the exact same cipher text would be the outcome. And by providing a different initialization vector every time with every encryption, even though the password is the same, we would have a different cipher text. And in that way, we have improved the security of our encrypted password. Now, if we have encryption, we for sure also have decryption. So let's take a look right here at that method. It takes the ciphered text, right? Always as a byte array. Again, we have the key and again, we have the initialization vector. And the key and the initialization vector both have to match. So whatever you use in encryption, you will have to use the same key and initialization vector for decryption. Very, very important. Okay, so let's take a look at both methods, the code right here. So we simply create an AES algorithm or like we just make use of that advanced encryption standard method right here then we create a memory stream to get the information then we create an encryptor object right here from the cryptography namespace and in the end we will simply write the ciphered text which will be the outcome of that crypto stream right here because it takes reference to the encryptor that we are creating here so basically this one is creating a string into the cipher text byte array. Oh, by the way, if you're interested in more .NET related videos, make sure to give this video a thumb up and to subscribe to our channel because you don't want to miss any of our upcoming videos. And if you take your c .NET career serious and you want to progress as fast as possible, take a look at our c -Sharp Progress Academy. It turns you into a full stack c -Sharp developer with knowledge in ASP.NET Core, Angular, unit testing and c -Sharp software design patterns. Well, it's a unique self-paced online course. We offer a 14-day money-back guarantee. And I promise you, that's the fastest way on how you can progress as a C-Sharp developer. So check it out, popping up in the info card at the top right corner right now, or you can find the link in the description below. Now let's continue with the decryption. Here we again create an AES, and then we create a decryptor this time. And then we create a decryptor this time, not an encryptor for sure. Again, we have a memory stream so that we can read the bytes. And in the end, we will convert our cipher byte array into plain uh, text, well, into readable text, right? Just a simple string. Now, let me just scroll up to get more into detail on what we have to provide here. So 
Once we start the application, we will have to enter a username and a password, right? Everything is readable so far. Now we generate the key and the initialization vector. Now I have to point out, and this is very crucial, there are multiple ways on how you can use keys. You can use one key for all your operations. Now in that way, we will use a single key, right? For multiple operations, and that definitely simplifies the key management because we only have to manage one key. However, if the key is compromised, all encrypted data is at risk. And in that way, to prevent that, we are using the multi keys approach here so that we have a brand new key for each operation. Don't forget, one operation means in that scenario, decrypting and encrypting. So we need the same key for the decryption process, right? Anyways, this approach is called the one key per cipher text approach. Key management becomes more complex here because we need to manage multiple keys, right? But it definitely provides a stronger security posture. So let me get that clear. If we would now encrypt the password, we have to save the key anywhere so that we can decrypt it later on. We could place it in any local file. We could put it in a database or whatever, right? It's not about that approach, but I guess you've got the idea. So we need to store the key, right? And then later on, once the user wants to decrypt or we want to decrypt the password, we also have to grab the key, which is stored anywhere. So very, very important. Now that brings me back to the point that we use that random number generator here from the cryptography namespace to get some random bytes, 16 right here, to make it work with the AES for the key and the initialization vectors. So we have two random byte arrays, which we will use for encryption and decryption. Now, as I said, you can create a key, something like a my secret key, just make sure that it's 16 bytes in the end, right? I guess you get the idea. You can just create a string and turn it into a byte array. Nothing, well, too special about that. But in that case, you have a single key. And once someone else knows the single key, your encrypted data is at risk. So your overall workflow would be to, first of all, generate a random key and a random initialization vector as we're doing it right here. Now, when you have your random key and your random initialization vector, you want to encrypt the password, right? You want to store the password. You also want to store that random key and you also want to store that random initialization vector because that's the information key and vector is what you need to decrypt later on. So once you want to decrypt the password later on, you want to grab the key, you want to grab the cipher password and you want to grab the initialization vector that you have saved anywhere and you would be able to decrypt the password. Awesome. And that's basically what's exactly happening here in the background. If I write down Yannick, nothing happens because it's just the username, but the password will get converted into cipher text. And that encrypted password got created from my plain text password, the initialization vector and the random key that we have generated. And as you can see, if we provide back the information about the key, cipher text and vector, we are able to convert it back in plain text. And that's basically how you can securely encrypt any data that needs to get secured. Perfect. So thanks for watching. I hope you liked that video. If you like it, please go ahead and give it a thumb up, subscribe to our channel and check out our C-Sharp Progress Academy if you want to become a drop-ready C-Sharp full-stack web developer. See you next time.